If you've seen some of my other action camera reviews, you'll know that there's one area that the general purpose action cameras tend to struggle with, and that's when you try and mount them to the side of a helmet, in my case, a motorcycle helmet. So I went and bought the right tool for the job. The video you're looking at now is from a Contour Rome 2, and the primary use for this camera is to attach it to the side of a helmet. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. The Contour Rome 2 camera is the cheaper of the two models in the Contour range at the moment. In fact, it's about half the price of the more expensive one, and as a result, it strips out quite a few of the advanced features. Although inside the box, you do get everything that you need to get up and running straight away. The specs on the other side of the box mention it goes all the way up to 1080p 30, the 720p 30 and 60 in there. It records a 170 degree wide angle lens, H.264, MP4 files. It's got a built in microphone. It can take memory cards up to 32 gigabytes in size and it's a little bit water resistant as well, which is nice. Let's look inside the box here and see exactly what you get. Well, first off, we'll fold this flap down here, which is a bit of an instruction leaflet, and we'll pull all these different things out and have a look. We've got a bag there to keep it in. Those are useful. There's that little instruction leaflet. It's just a sort of pictogram thing. Uh, there is a mount. I'll show you that later on attached to a motorcycle helmet. There's another mount. That's a revolving one. I'll show you that as well. We've also got this sticky back pad, which is an extra one for that mount. A USB A to mini B lead. Again, as usual, standard one. Four gigabyte card, class four. You'd think that wouldn't be enough, really. I mean, it's just to get you up and running. I use a nice class 10 card in mine. You've got a little lanyard here to hold it to things in case your mount doesn't hold. You've got a sticker if you want to walk around or drive around looking like an advert. And of course, you've got the camera itself. Now, the camera does come with this lens cap on the end here, which is nice as well. Remember, you can keep it in that bag, so you're not going to get it scratched if you're just carrying it around in a pocket. Bit of tape on the top here, presumably to stop that button getting uh, pushed inside the box somehow. And that's it. But we'll look at that in a bit more detail. First off, let's show you some more of that footage that I took while I was out on the bike. Now, what you're looking at now is my first journey that I took out on the bike with this helmet camera on. I'd positioned it the night before, got it charged up and just went out with the camera. It turns out that it records at 720p 60 out of the box. That's its standard setting. So I wasn't aware. I thought I was going to be recording 1080p 30 on my first journey and I was a bit disappointed when I got back home found it was only 720p 60. Notice down the bottom there, you'll see that's the SJ1000 camera. You've probably seen that in one of my other video reviews already. But if you haven't, you might want to go and have a look at that because that's a pretty good camera camera for the money. Now the one you're looking at now of course this is 720p 60 YouTube can only display 720p 30 so if you want to see the original files the original silky smooth 60 frames a second files the only way you're going to do that is by downloading them from my blog and playing them back on your own computer preferably in full screen so you get the full effect. Now this 1080p 30 shot, this was shot about 10 days later, it was the next time I got any decent weather, I had to go out in the evening to get it, so you're looking at something from around about 7 o'clock in the evening now, it looks pretty nice, now I'll just go quiet for a second so you can just have a listen to the noise that the camera's picking up. So as I'm sure you heard there, the camera does pick up quite a lot of wind noise and that's because the microphone's right on the front of it. I don't think adjusting any of the settings down will really do much to alleviate that. So I'm going to do a future video to demonstrate how to reduce wind noise on cameras like this. But anyway, as far as this one goes for the moment, the video quality in 1080p is pretty good. Um, I'm driving into the sun now and the camera's adjusted its brightness down suitably so that you can see the road properly even though the sky's a little bit bleached out. But when it gets to really low light conditions, it's a different story. This is what nighttime looks like. This is 11 o'clock at night or something like that. Um, it's just not good enough at all. Now, notice everything's jerking a little bit. Ignore that. That's probably just my computer or something. What you really want to do if you want to test these files out properly, again, download the originals and play them on your own computer because I think it's got some weird editing artifact on this one. But ignoring that, you can see that it is much too dark. And no matter of twiddling with the uh, settings in the camera is going to do anything to adjust this. So really 
really avoid the dark with this camera. Now, as far as specs go, at 720p 60, it records at 12.23 megabits a second. 1080p 30 was 11.06 megabits a second. Those are variable bit rates, so they can go up and down a little bit, but not too much. As far as battery life goes, in 1080p mode, I got three hours of recording time out of it. That used up 12.7 gigabytes of storage, which is split into four gigabyte segments. Now, please note, when the card's full, it doesn't recycle the video, it just stops recording because it's full. It doesn't loop or anything like that. Now, you might get another 30 minutes recording time out of that battery if you use 720p 30. Apparently, that's a little less battery intensive. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the camera itself. Well, looking on the bottom, first of all, you can see the model name there, Contour Rome 2. We've also got a tripod screw mount there with a metal thread in it. That's a very useful thing to have on a camera. We've also got a little light tunnel here with an LED shining through it to show when it's recording. And on the front there, that's a tiny microphone hole. Now this whole plastic section at the bottom here, you can see that's for mounting it to things. We've got these ridges here, either side, which slide into the mounting device. Uh, so therefore you can mount it from the bottom or from the sides. The top part here, that's all metal. Uh, the barrel shaped section, uh, apart from of course the back part here again which is a plastic door to get into that. I'll just show you that now. Um, this is a locking mechanism here. If you flip it that way, the little red um, bit shines through there, that means you can't open it up. It has to be unlocked to open it up and it slides up like that and springs down. Inside there we've got the micro SD card slot there. There's a tiny button at the bottom there that says format. That's for formatting the card inside the camera. We've got a standard size mini USB plug there for charging it and for data transfer. That button there is what this presses and that turns on the status and lights up the laser. I'll show you that in a second. And then you've got a tiny reset hole there, a reset button if you get into difficulties and the thing locks up for some reason. All right, so if I close that now, I'll show you what that button on the back does. If we press it, uh, the camera wakes up and it comes up with these indicators here. You can see that shows I've got a fully charged battery and I've got a memory card in there that's got room for putting some files on it. And also the laser is lit here. Hard to see with this bright studio light on, but I'll show you that properly in a minute. Uh, then it powers down itself automatically. So that is the button on the back. You don't tend to use that apart from when you're lining it up with that laser. The only other thing that you need is of course this big button on the top here. This is all rubberized and it's got a bit of a grip shape on it as well. It's got that same switch on there, so if you flip it like that, that means it won't move, and if you flip it like that, it means you can move it. So you can lock it in the off position, but you can also lock it in the on position, which is useful. So you don't accidentally knock it and stop yourself recording halfway through doing something really interesting. Now to start the camera up, running and recording all in one go, all you do is slide that massive switch on the top there. The camera starts recording, this red indicator lights up on the back and it's now recording. It makes a nice big loud beep as well, the kind of thing that you can hear through a motorcycle helmet. You can switch that off of course if you want, but it's very useful. Now if you, uh, as I mentioned, you can lock it here and that will stop you turning it off, but if you want to turn it off just slide it back. You get the two big long loud beeps again and that means it's stopped recording. Now the only other thing really on this camera is on the front here, the lens, of course, we've got this nice uh, glass front on it so that if we get flies and things or muck or whatever we can wipe that off quite easily. Um, but also it's rotatable, you can see some uh, numbers on here, minus 90 degrees all the way up to 180. And of course this is for mounting the camera on something and then twisting the lens around so that the horizon is straight. So for example, if you wanted to mount it sideways, maybe using that tripod, you'd uh, knock that one up to 90 degrees so it matched up on the top there and the camera is, ooh, well, maybe minus 90 for that direction. And uh, the camera is still the uh, right way up, as you can see here. Now, you don't have to just go to, say, minus 90 or plus 90 or 180 uh, if you want the video that way. You can go in between those, and uh, that might not seem useful to start with, but it is actually very useful. Now, I'll show you a little bit about how this part works. Uh, I'll just get this little uh, mount here. As you can see in there, you've got these two little sort of indents in the bottom of this long um, trough, and you've got these two bits here, which are kind of... Uh, springy outwards but also they've got that uh, 
bit that points up there. It's hard to see on the camera, but as you can see, that's supposed to line up in there. So what would happen is this is stuck to whatever it is you're wanting to mount the camera to, and you slide it all the way along, and it clicks in that position there. It doesn't sort of fall out easily. Now, of course, this is the rotating mount, one that I'm not using. I use the other one on my motorcycle helmet, but as you can see there, it's, it's a really good mounting system they've come up with because it's such a long trough, it's not just going to pop out at the end. And it's, that little bit is just enough to hold it in, but it's very easy to get it out again. It's almost like somebody's actually thought about this. Now let me show you how it looks on my bike helmet. I'll just be a second, I'll just get the bike helmet out on the table. Okay, so this is the contour mount. As you can see, they've done something very clever here. You might not notice it straight away, but what they've done is they've put a big rubber section here which is stuck all the way underneath front to back and then the mount is on the top of that the bit that attaches to the camera because of course that is a hard plastic section but this is flexible now being flexible it means it can mold itself to the contours of the helmet like that because of course a motorcycle helmet isn't flat in any part whether up or down front or back so this uh, big rubber section can stick to it when i put my camera on it the camera is nice and firm and all you do with this is you just slide it in like that it clicks in position and that's the camera there. So now the only other thing is, of course, I don't know if you can really see here, it might be a bit difficult, but the camera isn't quite straight. The camera's uh, at a bit of an angle. So what I do then is, of course, make sure that my uh, arrow is pointing a little bit to the right here. I line it up with the laser. So let's just uh, get the laser switched on at the back there. Now let's turn these lights off so that you can see this. Um, right, so there's the, uh, there's the horizon. So what I do is I put the helmet on and just twist it so that I can see that it's giving a straight horizon on the camera. So uh, then you can set off on your bike ride and you know that you're not going to end up with all your footage diagonal. So I really like the thing that they've done with the mount on here. The mount is such an important thing for a helmet camera and for me this one is working perfectly. OK, so of course this camera is designed as a helmet camera, but sometimes it's better to just get outside, point it at a few things holding it in the hand to get a better idea of how it performs. So let's have a look. I shot this stuff in 1080p mode on the highest settings that are available. If there's any kind of blocking or anything, that's probably down to YouTube again. Download the original clips if you want to test it out properly. I'm glad to see that the Peruvian nose flute chaps were in Manchester, protecting us from attacks of giant guinea pigs. If you haven't seen South Park, you won't know what I'm talking about, but if you have, you might find that slightly amusing. Let's have a look at some light to dark adjustments. As you can see here, the lights are flickering a little bit in the ceiling there. One good thing with this camera is, by the way, it can record in 1080p 30 or 25 and 720p 60 or 50 or 25 or 30. You've got all those options. This was shot in uh, 720p 60 from the train as I'm going over the sort of overpass thing. Um, this will only really look quite good if you download it because it's 60 frames a second shot. This again, look at this, I'm going to pan around 720p just to show you the sort of fisheye effect you get on that. Remember 720p records in 170 degree wide angle mode which means you get these kind of bendy buildings now when you switch it down to 1080p it doesn't do 170 degrees it does something more like 120 which is what you're looking at now which is a lot better the footage doesn't look as fisheye to me and 120 degrees is plenty wide enough and of course 1080p is also quite a bit sharper a little bit soft at the edges there I notice on the right where it says corn exchange a little bit soft but overall not bad at all now the thing with helmet cameras, you never really generally get to sort of stand still and look at stuff like I'm doing now. So it's nice that you can uh, look at this and uh, get a nice steady shot, see how sharp it is from edge to edge. Of course, when you're pelting along on a motorcycle, you don't get to see all this kind of detail. Let's go inside the print works there where it's always quite dark. Again, just demonstrating how this camera copes or 
rather doesn't cope in the dark this is not a camera for low light conditions as you can see here it's pretty dark that's in 1080p 30 by the way 720p 60 would be even darker than that now we're inside here here's the angle again we can compare these this is the 720p mode i shot it in 720p 60 you're watching in 720p 30 and now we go over to 1080p different day you can see the change of things at the bottom there the reason it's a different day i had to go home adjust the settings on the computer and come back again another day and shoot that shot because you can't just flip a switch in the camera that's something to bear in mind now let's get into changing those settings because I want to show you sort of what you have to do. First off, of course, you have to take the uh, back of the camera or open the back of the camera, plug in a USB plug into the camera. You can't just do this off the memory card. You have to actually use the camera. Plug it into your computer. In this case, I'm using a Mac. The software is available for Mac or PC. You can actually just look on the drive, use it as a, as a drive and click on it and go into it. And you can see the files there are in MP4 file format, which is great for Macs. Those import really easy easily into a Mac and they go straight into iMovie without any hassle and you can just preview any of those if you want and just look at them on your computer they'll look fine uh, but of course um, the real reason for this is that you're supposed to use this piece of software called Storyteller again available for Mac or PC and uh, Storyteller I thought it was just one of those sort of editing things where you convert your videos and stitch them together but no it's more important than that it enables you to get into the settings on the camera look at the top left here you see the camera's popped up there it says Contour Roam 2 that's the camera so you can look at what's on it it lets you look at all the different files see down the bottom import all or import selected all that kind of stuff I think you can edit them after you've imported them puts them into this library but ignore that click on that little cog there that gets into these settings in these this is where you change everything you can change the name of the camera uh, you can change the different uh, frame rates on there you can see at the top that's my firmware version and then down here is where we've got the video settings. We've got full HD 1080p or 960p or 720p, 720p 60, and then continuous photos. Uh, further down there, we've got quality, which is low or high. Of course, I've left it in high. I think the very first clip I did was in low. And then you've got the different uh, white balance modes there. But again, remember, you've got to change these once and then live with them for the rest of the day once you've changed them. You can change the mic sensitivity, uh, also there's a few other settings here again all sort of slider things different uh, modes just to adjust the brightness and the lighting all that kind of stuff but as I mentioned you've got to pick them for the day really unless you're going to carry your computer around with you so you just tend to leave them all on automatic and then there's a few things here about turning the LEDs on and off and the beep on and off that beep again very useful to keep on unless you're trying to record in secret like I was sort of in those shops and things you don't want to be beeping out dead loud now look at the bottom here, there's a few interesting bits. It tells you how much you can fit on the memory card, how much the files take up in the different modes. Look, as I switch between them here, it says like uh, 10 minutes per gigabyte, how many frames per second, the aspect ratio, that kind of thing. And as you move down the different ones, those things down the bottom change. It gives you a little bit of information there as to how much you're going to be able to fit on your memory card. It's quite nice that it does that, it sort of puts it in simple mode. But again, remember, once you've changed these, you're stuck with them. And down the bottom here, that's the one for the continuous photos. It tells you how many photos it takes in a minute and things. I think that's 20 photos a minute. Um, but again, that's what you're going to have to record in all day if you change it to that, unless you carry your computer around with you. So again, I just stick it on 1080p 30, high settings, everything in auto, and just hope for the best. Now, a couple of things I didn't mention to you before. The lanyard that I showed, not very exciting, but it just goes through the back of the camera through these little holes here. People like to see these little details sometime. The other end, of course, I've attached to that uh, uh, twisty mount there. And of course, you can disconnect in the middle here, which is very useful because you don't want to have it stuck to your mount all the time. Now, that mount, as you can see, it's kind of curved. That will go on the top of a helmet which is quite good, or anything else that's round for that matter. The top bit here, that revolves, as you can see, you can just sort of get the camera exactly where you want it. And remember the camera sort of sideways on, but when you flip that little thing, it locks it in place. That's pretty handy really. So you can just sort of slide your camera onto it. Now you don't actually have to have it on the top, of course. Your camera can go on the side like this and you can twist the lens at 90 degrees. So you got it facing the right way. So you can have a quite a shallow helmet mount that goes on the top of the helmet. Now, as far as weight goes, people are interested in this kind of thing, 145 grams, which is 5.115 ounces.
If I've got any criticism of the console Rome 2 is that the out of the box experience just wasn't very good. What happened to me was I got the camera, charged it up overnight, stuck it on the bike helmet in the morning and went out for a ride. When I got home I found I'd only managed to record half the journey and the second half had locked up but the bit I'd recorded was in 720p. I was expecting 1080p to be the default setting. It turns out that I'd really jumped a step. What I needed to do was get the console attached to the computer download the software off the Contour website, which would then let me update the settings on the camera to what I wanted, but also more importantly, it had a newer firmware which fixed some problems the first one did with compatibility with different memory cards and that's what had locked my camera up so okay so I downloaded the firmware sorted it out changed the settings to what I wanted and then from that point onwards it's worked perfectly now for me this is the ideal helmet camera I know there's other helmet cameras out on the market and I haven't tested them all I've only tested this one and a couple of other general action cameras but when you compare this to normal action cameras like the Go Pro or the Sony and things, those just don't really seem suited for what I want. I want a side mount helmet camera so I can put it on the side of my helmet rather than on the top like a Mohican or sticking up in some sort of ridiculous way. And this is designed for that. It's designed for going on the side of things. I know you can use it for lots of other things. It's got a tripod mount there and you can attach it to all sorts of things. But for me, it's been designed around the main purpose of attaching it to a helmet. And for that, they've done a really good job. Of course, you've got this massive button on the top here which, which makes it very easy to switch on and off where, when you're wearing gloves but it uh, doesn't accidentally switch on and off either. Uh, the mounting system is perfect it just seems to slide in there so easily and hold itself in place. The most important thing for me is that uh, swivel lens on the front so you can get the horizon dead straight which is something I haven't had on any other camera and it makes such a difference it's uh, it's ridiculous really because when you attach any uh, camera to a helmet it's always going to be a little bit off I've never managed to get one that's perfectly straight on the side of a helmet and this is no exception but it doesn't matter you just twist it a little bit get your horizon perfectly straight I thought having a laser level on a camera was just some ridiculous gimmick but on this camera it makes perfect sense it's exactly what you need to be able to get the camera lined up properly I mean who wants to go around shooting a lot of video and then find it's all at the wrong angle also of course this one has a uh, battery that lasts between three and three and a half hours now it doesn't have a replaceable battery that's some of the other contour models that offer that this one doesn't but that's quite a long time anyway uh, so I can't really complain about that and of course if you want to spend more money to get one with a replaceable battery then you can do that as well the other thing about it of course it's water resistant out of the box you don't need any silly cases or anything it will resist a good shower it'll go a meter underwater if you ended up doing that but hopefully I won't on my motorcycle but it's perfect for me uh, driving along if it gets wet it doesn't matter it's going to keep going anyway so for me I think this is the ideal helmet camera now no doubt people are going to tell me I should test out the drift HD as well and some other helmet cameras but at the moment out of the cameras I've tested this is the one that's remaining on my motorcycle helmet all the time when I'm out on the bike Right, so that's it for the moment. Thanks to anyone that suggested I should have a look at the Contour Rome 2. Turns out you were right after all. You're not as daft as you look. Anyway, for the moment, thanks for watching.